we discussed what are the books that are to be referred for or read for cracking an examination like ICR, SRF. In this part of the video, I like to discuss with you what are the strategies that I follow to prepare all these examinations. Uh, I have cracked different level of examinations like ICR, JRF, SRF, UGC, JRF, NDRI, IARI or ARS, NET uh, or any other examination that I have read. I have always followed one common strategy for reading textbooks or multiple choice question books. It is very important uh, to know how to read a textbook or any other book. Uh, because I believe that anyone can tell you uh, who is uh, related with the subject, anyone can tell you what are the books that are supposed to be referred for cracking an examination. But it becomes very important to know how to read these kind of books. Because textbooks might get boring at some times and uh, for cracking these uh, higher level examinations for PhD, one student must and should refer textbooks. You cannot just go on and uh, attempt the examinations by reading multiple choice question books or by hurting them. So it becomes very important to read textbooks. So what was the strategy that I followed to read all these textbooks? The first thing uh, I used to do was to just go to the book, take the book and see through the index. When I used to browse through the index uh, and even I suggest you to go, uh, do the same. When you see the index, you will just get an outline of the whole book and it is like you create an empty box and when you go into different chapters you just see don't just jump into the text directly but just see what are the headings and subheadings when you see the subheadings and headings you cover half of the subject and then half the work is actually already done you the only thing is that you have to relate these headings or subheadings and Connecting the dots becomes very important and when you relate these things you remember them more and when you read the headings you try to imagine what would be the uh, text that would be written here if it matches your imagination it will be well and good so if it does not match your imagination you will always try to remember that okay I had imagined this and it was not there in the text so this is how I used to approach reading these textbooks and the first thing that uh, another thing that I'd like to suggest you is never make notes in the first reading because making notes in the first reading makes actually no sense. For example, if you are reading any book, for example, if you are reading GL Ray's book, if you are trying to make notes out of that book, you are you will write, you will end up writing another GL Ray but not make any sense in making notes. So this is uh, one of the common mistakes that our students do that I have seen my friends doing and even sometimes I have done the same mistake but never make notes from uh, any book in the first reading itself and uh, one more best suggestion that I'd like to give you is just go through the book very fast don't bog down yourself in the same page for more than an hour thinking that if I read this again and again I'll understand it better uh, the basic thing is, the basic funda of reading is, when you try to brush through the book faster, you will try to connect all the topics and you will understand it more better. If you sit in the same topic for hours, you will gain actually nothing and nobody in the examination will ask you anything much deeper. So there is no sense in actually reading same text for more than 4 to 5 hours. You must go through, brush through the whole book very fast. And when you read it repeatedly, you will try to remember, you will try to connect the dots. And I am repeating the same thing again. Connecting the dots becomes very, very important and it will make you remember the things uh, very easily. And then uh, uh, there is usually another question that is asked to me whenever I guide my juniors. So how did you make notes? Personally, uh, it, it might be surprising, but personally I have never made any kind of notes while reading textbooks. So what I used to do was after I completed uh, reading the books, I used to uh, make some special uh, kind of, uh, uh, I used to jot down all the author names. This was suggested to me by my senior uh, Krishna DK. He, what he suggested to me was that uh, he asked me to write all the uh, topics that are similar 
in a same book for example if you are reading different kinds of effects for example there are in extension especially there are different kinds of effects like pygmalion effect or guinea pig effect or many other kinds of effects so these are given in different textbooks and i used to jot down the similar topics in a same page so i used to know the similarity between these topics and what is the difference between these topics so such thing could be made into a notes so uh, and another thing is i used to make note of all the authors and their contribution or their books so at that point of time i you I, i i i could read much of the authors in a single page so this is how uh, my note making was there i did not make any uh, note for a particular concept i just used, uh, used to write uh, answers so this is how uh, i used to uh, read my textbooks and then one more uh, specific methodology that my senior suggested to me was uh, he asked me to read appendix the subject index or the author index so uh, this could be best utilized when you revise the whole book so i used to go to the subject index and author index or the name index so whenever i used to see a particular uh, title for example if i read about reinvention so uh, in the subject index i uh, i used to find different kinds of words and uh, whenever reinvention used to appear i used i tried to imagine what is the definition i tried to imagine what are the concepts that are related with with it if i did not know it uh, the page number would be written in front of that uh, word in the subject index so i used to find that page and read it again so this is how i used to remember i used to revise the whole textbook in a very short span of time so this is how i used to uh, read textbooks actually and then uh, there is another uh, uh, type of book that is the multiple choice question books so uh, how did i read these multiple choice question books um, most of the uh, students uh, try to solve these multiple choice question books in the last one month or 15 days of their examination but i i don't think that it is very useful if you do that in the last months uh, i believe that after the first reading one student must take up these multiple choice question books and they, they must try to solve uh, i don't uh, even i have myself never solved all the questions in the multiple choice book in my first reading itself it is very difficult and don't ever panic if you are not able to solve questions so if you are uh, able to solve at least 50% of them you are very uh, good at it so uh, whatever what i used to do that if i was able to solve uh, 50% of the questions uh, it was good and then the other 50% i used to mark them with either one color or any specific mark that i used to make so in the second reading uh, then i used to go to the textbook i used to read the textbooks in the second reading and then uh, while reading for the second time in the same textbook i used to pick i used to understand and i used to get from where the questions are picked and this would be very helpful if you know from where the questions are picked in the textbooks you will underline it and you will remember it better so this is how i used to combine reading both textbook and the multiple choice question books and then uh, when i read multiple choice books for the second time i never went again uh, to the questions that i have already solved because it's a waste of time and i used to save my time by this way uh, by not going not touching those questions that i already solved in the first reading i just simply went through those questions that i have marked and uh, only those questions i used to solve if i was able to solve at least 50% of the questions that i have left over it would be fine so uh, in the third reading of the multiple choice question book you are left with around 25% questions i would mark them with another color and then i used to solve uh, these multiple choice these leftover multiple choice that i did not solve in either first or second reading so even after uh, again in the third round i never went through these uh, questions in the first or second round that i have solved and only i used to go through the 25 questions that i am left with so this way i never wasted my time in reading multiple choice question books and the same questions that i have already solved and then uh, if uh, you are not able to solve uh, these 25% questions that you are left over uh, in your third reading after your third reading also what i used to do was i used to make a, a short note 
I used to uh, write one line answers and uh, write them in a separate book. So this is how I uh, made use of these multiple choice question books. And then uh, this is how I read multiple choice and the textbooks both. So uh, another question comes is that how did I uh, prepare for the examination? This is about reading the books. But next comes how did I prepare for the examination? The best way is uh, the first thing is to practice question papers. You must set a time. You must practice question papers. I had one senior from NDRI, Dr. Ramya HR. She used to give me question papers uh, and uh, Dr. Debashish Das from Pantanagar. They used to prepare questions papers for me and I used to practice them. I used to show them the answers and I did not panic whenever I was not able to solve. We used to discuss it. And uh, this is one part, uh, practicing the question papers. And the second part is discussing uh, with your seniors or your classmates. Because while discussion, most of our uh, uh, senses are very active. And in extension, we always say that the more the senses are involved, more of it you can remember. So I uh, discussed a lot of things with my seniors, uh, especially Dr. Devashis Das from Pantanagar. We used to discuss a lot of things each and every day. And I remember each and every uh, chapter that he had taught me. So this is how uh, I uh, used to crack. And then one more thing uh, that I used to do was to speak with my teachers because teachers are those people, the assistant professor or professors, they are those people who set the question papers. They have an idea. They, they will give you an overview and they will tell you what are the specific topics that are to be uh, uh, given uh, that are to be highlighted while reading. So uh, I, I used to discuss uh, my reading with my teacher, Dr. Itiki Prabhakar. So whenever you might have a teacher uh, to whom uh, with you, uh, whom you can discuss freely. So such things, such people can help you better in preparing for these examinations. And coming to the last part of the uh, video, I'd like to tell you how did I approach the examination paper. Most of us prepare very well. Most of us read and uh, do a lot of stuff while preparing for the examination and then they uh, they shackle, they, they break down while writing the examination. So preparation is one part and writing the examination in is another very big part of the uh, your uh, uh, cracking the examination. So uh, it is said that you should attempt maximum questions but not all questions. So the best way to approach question paper is to solve all the questions that you know already, you might have heard after reading for so long, you might know most of the questions around 80% of the questions are very simple. You might uh, solve them in the first round itself. So I at least uh, I used to have three rounds while solving my papers. Uh, in the first round, I used to solve all the easy questions that uh, I knew already. And in the second round, I tried to uh, solve those questions in which I had uh, chances of 50% getting right. So uh, like this, I used to complete my first two rounds and if I'm left with more time, I attempted one or two questions that I was, that I could attempt by eliminating the other options. So this is how I used to approach my paper. And then there are uh, some examinations in which you might not get a time to uh, return back again for the next round. For example, I wrote my IRI entrance examination in which I knew uh, beforehand that I would not be able to come back uh, to attend for another time. So I uh, solved all questions that I knew that I was sure of at least 80% uh, that I was sure of. So I, uh, I never had the chance to come back again because these uh, type of examinations or uh, IRI PhD entrance that was held earlier or the ARIS examination that uh, we faced. So these kind of examinations have written uh, answers. They are having subjective questions also. So you might never get time to come back. So you must attend uh, these examinations uh, in the first round itself. So never waste your time in multiple choice questions and by coming to the second round. So uh, and one more thing, uh, but in SRF examination, you might get a uh, very good time uh, very, wherein you can come for second or third round. I'd like to share my experience with you. Uh, I, I had no time in uh, I, uh, IRI entrance examination, but in SRF examination, I had around uh, 45 minutes left with me. And I'd like to share one more thing. 
just before I entered the examination hall of uh, ICR SRF, I got a call and I was told that I got uh, second rank in uh, NDRI examination. So I was very sure that I am not going to take up any SRF seat anywhere. So I was very careless about the examination and I attempted, uh, in the first round I attempted around uh, uh, 185 questions out of the 200 and then in the second round I attempted 9 more and then I had uh, 5 leftover questions. I had uh, 45 minutes of time left over with me after attending all these 3 rounds and out of the temptation I attended all those 5 questions also. And moreover, I, I, I was not concerned for the examination because I had the luxury of leaving that examination and getting a seat somewhere else and I was assured of that. But this luxury is not available for uh, all those aspirants who are going to take up examination this year and I, I'd like you not to make the mistake that I made. So uh, if I had attended, uh, if I had not attended those five questions, I probably guess my rank would have been better than the 6th that I have got now. So another important thing that uh, uh, I'd like to uh, tell to you is uh, be very attentive and be very uh, practical in the examination by taking very calculated risk. If you don't know the question, uh, the answer, don't never ever put an answer blindly because blind guesses will always lead to tragedy. Uh, and uh, try to make up your mind, try to uh, read very seriously. If you are reading uh, for these examinations very seriously, you will always have chance of cracking it up with very good ranks. And uh, that's it uh, for now. I'd like to thank you and uh, thank uh, Girijesh Mehra sir for asking me to speak to you guys in this video. Uh, thank you, that's it.